this is just a quick uh, rundown video for Evil Beaver Films, who was asking about a uh, simulating blood dripping down a wall. Um, it, at first he was thinking of doing it with particles, but I suggested maybe just compositing some still images with animated masks and whatnot. Um, and I threw up a couple of quick examples for him to check out. So yeah, this is just to show him how I did it. Keep in mind these were thrown together in all about five minutes. And they're very rough. Obviously, if you take the time, it will look a hell of a lot better. Um, so, first up, um, basically, I've got my concrete wall. Now, I just grabbed some images off of Google. So, this is the first blood splat. Um, that's the second one. And then the concrete wall. So, yeah, basically, my first composite. I've got my concrete wall just scaled, moved, whatever. Um, and then in that I've got another composite, which is the drip. So if I go to the drip composite, basically, I've got three copies of the um, blood splatter image. And for the first one uh, on the bottom layer, basically what I've done is I've taken the blood and masked it out. Uh, let's see if I can show you the mask. So just masked everything else out of the shot apart from a small bit of the blood. Um, I also moved the anchor point. So it's basically at the top of the image that way when I scale it it's not going to scale it in all directions. Um, so yeah, I move the anchor point up to the top just by you know clicking the anchor point and adjusting it how you want. Um, and then I just animated its scale and its position over time. So I'll just turn on a few. So basically what that looks like is it's just stretching out. Um, did the same thing for the large blood drip and then on, on top of both of those I added an effects so under effects distort, distort and waves so I added that on um, it's got a low amplitude of only 10 frequency of 10 uh, a phase speed of 0.10 so that's not moving too fast um, and I changed the angle to 90 degrees um, and then I've just animated the amplitude so that starts off at 10 and then drops down to 0 towards the end so that there's no distortion when you want the blood to stop moving so if we have a look here you can see it adds this sort of ripple as if the blood's starting to drip So I did that for both. I'll just activate it back on here. So there we go. Now you could offset the timing just so it doesn't look like they're moving at exactly the same time. Um, but yeah, so that's how I did just that part. And then, so the masks have a slight feather to them. Then I put the rest of the blood image back over top. But if you check out the mask it actually extends um, like I'm reveal uh, keeping more of the stem than what I cut out so, th so that as it moves it doesn't um, show through so if I just um, grab my mask here see if I move that point up you can see oops where it actually cuts off but I have it down further so that you don't get any distortion as it's animating uh, any of the black background throwing showing through as it's animating and then I just simply added that in um, just put the blending mode to be multiply and that's what it looks like so if you imagine if you've got a big picture with um, lots of blood drips 
and you actually go through and animate all of those, it could look pretty cool. Um, and then the second one was this, where the blood actually flies in and then starts dripping down the wall. This one's a bit more complex, but still relatively simple. Um, so I'll go into that comp. So what I did is I've got an animated mask, which basically shoots up in a sort of broken up random fat pattern. Um, and that's got some feathering on it as well, just to show the blood shooting out. Um, the It's also faded in because I end up adding some blur later. Um, and then effects wise, I've once again got the waves. So if we check that out, that just gives it a little bit of wave. And it's also once again scaled um, horizontally. Uh, yeah, no, vertically, sorry. It's scaled vertically so that, if I just turn off the waves, so that it looks like it's starting to run down the wall. And then the waves just add a little bit of extra pattern to it. Um, then over the top of that, I've added a blurred one, which I'll just turn the effect off. Uh, basically, the scale is the same as the splat underneath, but then the opacity has been um, edited. See how it sort of you are meant to be at zero percent. Um, so yeah, it sort of fades on. No, actually, it's meant to fade out, sorry. So yeah, 100%. And yeah, so yeah, it fades out, sorry. Um, and then on top of that, I've added an angle blur. <coughs> and I've set the blur angle to 45 degrees to match the way the blood actually splats in on the screen. Um, and that just helps give it some motion blur. So then as it fades out, like it looks pretty terrible there, but because it moves so fast, you don't really notice it. Um, it fades out to reveal the unblurred layer underneath and then it just starts dripping. And then when I've put that comp on top of the background, I've added another effect, which is the displacement, which once again is under distort displacement. And then with the displacement, I've set the source layer to be the concrete wall and messed around with the actual displacement itself. So if we have a look, just try and find an area, maybe look around here where these sort of lines are in the wall. It actually ripples over them. So that's with displacement and without. So yeah, that's all that I did for those two. Pretty easy and quick. Um, like I said, if you play around with it more, you'll be able to get a better result, um, as well as mess around with the color grading and whatnot. So yeah, hope that helps you out. Cheers.